Hello, you're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News. On today's programme... NATO leaders agree to make climate change a top priority as it risks threatening global security. We look at how the UK's leading tech firms are working together to achieve net zero emissions. And the leader working with young people to build sustainable communities in Central America. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show where we track the changes happening to our world right now and we meet those who are developing the solutions. Well, NATO leaders have met in Brussels today and while China and Russia were top of the agenda for the first time, climate change was also a priority. Rising temperatures and extreme weather have caused instability across the world and there are concerns global warming has become a threat to transatlantic security. So why has climate become such a pressing issue for the military alliance? Well, joining me now is Nizreen El Saim. She's climate activist and chair of UN Secretary General's Youth Advisory Group on Climate Security. A very good afternoon to you, Nizreen. We were looking there at some of the global threats to security which come through climate change. I know you're from Sudan. Talk us through the security threats to the parts of the world like your country. Thank you very much, Samantha. And indeed, for Sudan, it's not a matter of science or uh, papers or documents. It's something that we are living in actually every day of our life. Um, I mean, nowadays, it's everything is very much intense because of the climate crises that we are having. Uh, uh, in 2007, the previous um, uh, UN Secretary General mentioned the conflict in Darfur and uh, described it as the first climate uh, conflict in the um, recent days. And unfortunately, things are not stopping at that time. You've got a very prominent position, haven't you? Um, chair of the UN Secretary General's Youth Advisory Group. It's been the young people, hasn't it, who've really been driving home awareness and the messaging. Do you have confidence that people with the financial and indeed military might are listening? Well, unfortunately, they will not have a choice in a very, very soon uh, time. Uh, all what we are trying to do as young people is we don't want to reach the limit of breaking down. We want to uh, try as much as possible to uh, save what's left from our environment and our planet. And of course, we are very much concerned about our future and the next generation's future. I guess young people are in the front line of the climate action, not only because we have no other solution, but because we see we see things as pure at, as it is. Business as usual is not going to work. Climate change is going to impact everyone and every aspect of life. And the COVID-19 was a very small test of what nature can actually do of us if we did not take actions now. Thank you very much for your time, Nizreen. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at some of the day's other climate news now. And electricity generated from wind power in the UK has increased by 715% since 2009, with the national grid saying that 2020 was the greenest year on record. Well, according to latest figures from the Office for National Statistics, wind energy generation accounted for 24% of total electricity generated in 2020. And last year, the UK generated enough electricity to power 8.4 trillion LED light bulbs. 
Health. Clean air zone charges have come into force in Birmingham today, meaning that drivers of cars, taxis and vans that don't meet emission standards will have to pay £8 per day with the zone in force 24 hours a day all year round. Drivers of larger vehicles which don't meet requirements like certain coaches, buses and HGVs face having to pay £50 a day. Voters in Switzerland have narrowly rejected proposals to tackle climate change. The measures were designed by the Swiss government to help meet targets under the Paris Agreement. Proposals included the introduction of a car fuel levy and tax on air tickets. Elon Musk has said that Tesla will resume allowing Bitcoin transactions when miners use more renewable energy. In February, Tesla said that it would accept Bitcoin as payment, but just a few months later announced it would no longer be accepted, citing environmental concerns. Marine biologists believe that rising sea temperatures could be to blame for a mystery skin disease that's affecting white-tipped reef sharks in Malaysia. Sharks have been appearing near Sipadan Island with spots and lesions on their heads. And attempting to diagnose what could be causing the illness, scientists found the sea surface temperature at Sipadan had risen to 29.5 degrees Celsius in May. That's a degree higher than in 1985. Now, world leaders from the G7 countries have agreed to step up the action on climate change after a three-day summit in Cornwall. Well, the group has committed to reaching net zero no later than 2050 and to halve their collective carbon emissions by 2030. They've also promised to protect and restore at least 30% of the natural world by 2030. G7 leaders said that they will phase out coal plants at home and stop financing coal overseas. And they've agreed to meet an overdue pledge to spend $100 billion a year helping developing countries cut emissions and deal with global warming. But environmental campaigners say that these promises lack detail. They've criticised G7 leaders for failing to provide any new commitments on climate finance. Well, with me now is Asad Raymond, Director of War on Wants. It's an anti-poverty charity. A good afternoon to you, Asad. Um, the G7 says that it's pledging to build back better. Would you agree? No, I wouldn't. I think disappointment would be an understatement. I mean, just before the G7 met, scientists, the UN, said we're heading towards a point of no return. Carbon emissions in 2021 are the highest in a decade. Climate impacts are affecting millions and current pledges are so weak. And to be honest, it, it seems like the G7 spent all their time, you know, seeing that the house is on fire and discussing what colour to paint the door. They, on the critical issue of taking responsibility and making the kind of reductions that they needed, it just didn't go far enough. They need to do their fair share. 2030 was a, a, the target. On the issue of climate finance, that countries, low-income countries have been overwhelmed by COVID and climate impacts, etc. We're just rehashing the same broken promise made 10 years ago for 100 billion. And of course, that's just a drop in the ocean. Climate scientists say we need about three and a half trillion to meet the 1.5. It's There are estimates that we'd need at least a trillion, if not more, each and every year to build that better so that we can have an equal society for all. Asad Raymond, really good to talk to you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Now, the head of the CBI says that the corporate world is way off track when it comes to tackling climate change. Tony Danker has urged businesses to step up and drive the UK's transition to net zero emissions. Well, it comes as some of the country's fastest growing tech companies have come together to launch a climate action plan. The Tech Zero Task Force wants to help firms become net zero and offer their customers greener choices. Well, here to explain more is Hayden Wood, co founder of Bulb and one of the Tech Zero Task Force leaders. Uh, good afternoon to you, Hayden. Uh, I want to start by asking about customers because you're in the energy space. Have you noticed that customers' attitudes towards where the energy comes from has changed? Hi, Sam. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, the answer to your question is yes, we have noticed a, a huge difference. Uh, Bulb was founded in 2015 and back then, less than 1% of homes were purchasing energy from a renewable supplier, and now that's up to 30%. It could be the growth story of the decade, couldn't it, the green revolution, but why is the money not coming through the door quicker? 
Yes, I think it could be uh, the story of the century, but um, we are in we are in a bit of jeopardy right now. It's a race against time to, to to fight this climate crisis, and we're running out of time. And we need to act fast and move fast. And that means that you know thousands and thousands of companies will need to change the way they uh, work and operate. Uh, millions and millions of people will need to uh, change the, 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 the way they live. And um, you're absolutely right that those changes will require innovation and investment in, in new infrastructure. And the, I guess the good news is that those things are starting to happen, um, but the, um, it's incumbent on, on all of us to, uh, to make it happen as, you know, as quickly as it needs to in order to avoid temperature change. Well, I wish you all the best of luck with it. Good to talk to you. Hayden Wood, thank you. Thank you. Now, in Central America, the major impact of climate change isn't a future concern. It is already happening. Sara Urtate is co-director of CERES. It's an organisation that is helping young people become community leaders in sustainability in Guatemala and El Salvador. I believe that climate change is the moral test of our times. It's not just about the environment, it's about human rights and justice. It's about taking responsibility for our fellow human beings and translating that into action. CERES operates in Central America, an underdeveloped region of the world that despite contributing very little to the causes of climate, suffers some of the worst consequences. Last year, in the midst of the pandemic, two hurricanes hit the country. Can you imagine having to decide whether to save your house and your crops from the floods or whether you can contract COVID at a shelter? Our work supports young people from the most vulnerable communities to organize and begin to take action, to build resilience, to protect our ecosystems and to reduce climate vulnerability. Just in the past three years, 50 hundred young people joined the movement every day working in actions such as reforestation campaigns, educational, um, environmental education, human rights, access to water, food sovereignty, and many others. If the rest of the world could follow their example, I know that we could achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Inspirational stuff there. Well, that is everything from us for today. Coming up tomorrow, it is Global Wind Day. We'll be finding out about the future potential for wind energy around the world. Thanks, as ever, for watching. See you then.